The English name of Jesus comes to us from the Greek New Testament. In Greek it is pronounced Jesus. Letters in Greek are also numbers. This is called Gematria. The letters of both languages of the Bible are also numbers. This makes the Bible the largest mathematical document in history. Any child can recognize that there is a pattern to the name and number of Jesus. The question is, does this pattern end with the name, or is it just the beginning of something greater? For five years, I pondered that very question, going back and forth as to whether the math was real, or did it just appear so? I studied the texts of the Bible, in the original Hebrew and Greek, and what I found was that not only, were there highly improbable mathematical patterns in the Bible, many of them were astronomically improbable, and they were everywhere, in every book, chapter, passage and possibly even to the verse. Thanks to Strong's concordance, we have an extraordinarily high accuracy with many of us tend to assign a proper statistical probability. It is this combination of probability theory, and set theory, two very well established fields of scientific inquiry, that we. It is this combination of probability theory, and set theory, two very well established fields of scientific inquiry, that allows us to analyze the statistics of biblical mathematics with extraordinarily high confidence. This production highlights only one aspect of the mathematics of the Bible, that being the name Jesus and its corollary in the remarkable 888. The original name of Jesus in Hebrew means, God is salvation. Jesus, is of course, God, as well as, the salvation of humanity. I am Alpha, and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. The Alpha and Omega, first and last, run throughout the entirety of the Bible. They are more than just a title, they are a clue to the nature of the codes and ciphers that are buried in the text. The majority of sets that I have studied, have at least one Alpha Omega code in them. In citing the letters, such as Alpha and Omega, we can see a clear reference to the letters of Biblical Gematria itself. The Spirit of the Lord, is a perfect name for Christ, as Christ was the bearer of this Spirit, which is the Holy Spirit of the Lord. Jacob called the name of the place, Peniel, for I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. In this verse we have a reference to the face of God, that is to say, the identity of God, which was revealed in his incarnation as Christ. The Shekinah of the Lord, was thought to be the earthly presence of God, just as the incarnation of Christ, was the presence of God on earth. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Believing that Jesus is God, is the wisest of choices. It is the freest of gifts, that returns the greatest of all possible dividends. Here we have a triple correlation, in the standard valuation where the two hallelujahs of the Bible and the voice of God, make the sum of the name of Jesus. We can begin to see now, just how deeply orchestrated the mathematics of the Bible are. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life, no man cometh unto the Father, but by me. see here, that the two strongest cases in the Greek declension, that refer to identity, the nominative case, which is the subject of the sentence, and the genitive case, which is the possessive form of the word, both ways add up to our 888.
Switching now to the Hebrew, we find that Jesus is indeed the fullest possible truth. We see this pattern, again, now in the factors, that make up the Greek word for truth. Jesus is the life, as he is the source of all life and the salvation of our lives. As the Trinity is three in one, any aspect of the Trinity, may speak for the Trinity as a whole, just as Jesus spoke on behalf of God, because he was God in the flesh. Who with thee is a fountain of life, in thy light shall we see light. God is the fountain of life, and by acknowledging Jesus as Lord, we have access to the fountain of life. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. It should be noted here, that both 373 and 515 are palindromic numbers making this an improbable match. The life of Christ was full of wonders and miracles, and we know only but a fraction of all the wonders he did while on earth. Here is a most auspicious pairing with God's primary name and the Parousia, which is the return of Christ. Who else, but a God who is Jesus, would make such a pairing? Now with the Greek for Lord, we have a pairing with perhaps the most famous Greek word in the modern world, in the word Nike. Christ is of course, the victory of the Lord. Jesus is the Messiah, and Jesus is the Lord, and Jesus is our sanctifier. This correlation comes from a verse, but has more codes in it than any verse I've yet encountered, except the first verse of Genesis. Christ's sacrifice on the cross was the perfection of God, but not judged by our standards, but by his own, which are infinitely higher. He took not away the pillar of the cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night, from before the people. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Here we find a really telling correlation in both of the numbers are mirror reflections of each other, making for a higher improbability, and that we find the theological union of the two pillars, in one Lord, which is thus the three of the Trinity. The seat of God was in the Holy of Holies of the Temple. The seat was the Ark of the Covenant, where the presence of God would manifest, between the outstretched wings of the cherubim, as God's presence on earth. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters.
This is a truly wonderful correlation, in that the seed of the woman is the very first prophetic reference to the coming Messiah, and the Spirit of God is the second reference to God in the Bible. These two factors make this correlation highly improbable. And he shall be for a sanctuary, but for a stone of stumbling and for a rock of offense to both the houses of Israel. This here is a very obvious cipher, where one can almost see the human side to the mind of God. declare the glory of God, and the firmament show of his handiwork. This correlation is a clear reference to the star over Bethlehem, which was a declaration in the heavens that announced the coming of the world's Savior. Here is yet another reference to Christ being the life, this time using the correct and ancient Hebrew spelling for Jesus, which is Joshua in Hebrew, meaning God is salvation. For I am the Lord, I change not, therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. We can see God's unchanging nature, in the unchanging aids, in the name Jesus. We find again, two very strong names for the divinity, perfectly adding up to the son of the name of Jesus. I am the door, if any enter through me, he shall be saved. Christ is the metaphysical door of salvation. It is by the belief in this door that it is metaphysically opened for us. Jesus is the Holy One of God and is salvation itself. We have even yet another correlation with salvation, which is the meaning of the name Jesus. He has remembered his mercy and his truth toward the house of Israel, all the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. There are so many highly improbable correlations in the Bible, that it is more than just proof, it is oceans, and oceans and oceans, of proof, proof enough, to drown in. God doesn't always use the exact same phrasing for his math. Rather it is more typical that he matches opposites, in both number and grammar, as can be seen in the mathematics of the first verse. In this match, we find the strongest monotheistic statement in the Hebrew Bible, correlates perfectly with the ideal summation of the nature of the Trinity. More than just a double reference to the way, the truth and the life, we see the name of Jesus is the way of the Lord's holiness. You 
using the Greek words from the New Testament for the way, the truth and the life. In the ordinal, we find that it pairs perfectly with the correct Hebrew spelling for the name of Jesus, which should strongly indicate just how correct that spelling is. We can do this again, this time using the ordinal Greek for Jesus Christ. This is typical of biblical gematria, if the Hebrew reflects in the Greek, and the Greek reflects in the Hebrew, just as the ordinal does with the standard. The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand, until I make thine enemies thy footstool. So then after the Lord has spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven, and sat on the right hand of God. The first verse of the 110th Psalm is the most quoted verse in the entire Bible. To a Jewish mystic, the reference to the right hand of God would be a reference to the third vessel on the tree of life. In this correlation, we see the use of the modern Hebrew final forms. These semi-letters were introduced centuries after Christ, making every correlation thereof a modern miracle. And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am, hath sent me unto you. This final correlation has an improbability of three out of the quadrillion. To put it another way, a quadrillion seconds of time is over 31 million years. Random chance would have to select the perfect three seconds out of those 31 million years. This, by all common experience, proves that this equation's occurrence is one of pure design, and a design that is divine, and by a divinity whose name is Jesus. If you have enjoyed this video, please share it. If you would like to see more videos like this from John Elias, subscribe to this channel.